Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Hints, Tips, and Tricks with me, Bridger, right here on the Sound Strategy Network. Today, we are taking a look at the naval interface. How do you select your ships, how do you manage them, and how do you send them on missions? We're just covering the basics today, and then we'll go into more detail on a future video. So, first, how do you select your ships? There are three different ways. The first way is you can go to the naval overview here and find your ships this way and select the home fleet, for example. But of course, this makes it uh, not easy to find out where is uh, Sub-Saharan. I don't know exactly where that port is. Well, you get to right click on them and it'll pan your, pan your view right to the fleet in question. Fantastic. Uh, but another way to find your fleets is you can see them actually on the map in many cases. So you can see this is a Light. Uh, this is a fleet with a light cruisers as the largest ship in it. It's also actually got two fleets there. When you hover over it, it'll show you that you have two different fleets, one with 11 ships and one with six ships. So you can see them on the map when they are given a hold order. This is how they appear. There is another way that you will find your fleets, and that is when they are on missions, you can identify them by these symbols right here. So this indicates that there is at least one fleet, in fact, there is one fleet on a search and destroy mission in this zone. So you can click on that and then select the fleet, and we can see the composition of the fleet, we can see all the ships in the fleet, and we can see the leader in the fleet and what his skill does, and of course we can rename it. We can name it Mediterranean Flot, because reasons. So... These give you all the different controls of your fleet. Let's start talking about management. So within a given fleet, you have a number of options of things that you can do. Of course, you can put it on a hold. And if it is on a hold, you can maneuver it uh, thusly. You can give it orders and they will travel from mini sea zone to mini sea zone. But these larger, I'm sorry, these are mi mi uh, regions is what they're called, I believe. And then the zones are the larger options here. Uh, I'm looking in air for some reason. So this is a naval zone here. And we can send our units on a mission within that naval zone. So I'll send them on a mission right over here. And now as soon as they get here, they are going to spread out and turn into this little mission icon here. And it looks like we got a king dead. So uh, what does this mission do? Well, the mission does a couple of things. You have a couple options here. Patrol sends your ships on a very wide open thing. You're more likely to find enemies, but when you do find them, you will be less likely to have an advantage early in combat as the rest of your ships gather close. Then you have search and destroy. Your ships stay close so that when you do find the enemy, you have an advantage, but it's much less likely that you'll find the enemy. And this essentially uh, is f used for fleets that consider themselves inferior to their enemy. So Italians fighting British, Germans fighting British would probably keep their fleets tight together. And the British, if they feel superior, might uh, put their ships out very wide so that they find the uh, nosy Italians trying to hide from them. Then there's convoy raiding, which does exactly what it sounds like. And there's convoy escort, which does exactly what it sounds like. You would use a, a fleet of maybe a few light cruisers and a bunch of destroyers on convoy escort duty to protect your convoys. Now in naval map mode, which is what we're in right here, which you can access via F2 or clicking in the bottom right, you can see all these little, uh, little dotted lines. They all indicate convoy routes that, in the case of the British, they have a lot of convoys. They're sending resources back to the, uh, the homeland from UK, uh, Cyprus is sending some resources back, North Borneo is sending some. Uh, we're also exporting uh, oil to the British Raj, because that's uh, essentially people buying stuff from us. And then we have supply transfers. You can see that we are sending supplies overseas from our capital to all our different holdings in the world. So the British in, in particular have a large number of these. So very valuable to see where your fleets are going to. So the British would probably want to escort uh, convoys in the English Channel, Bay of Biscay, and the Iberian Coast. And if they have something coming from the U.S., maybe the Western Approaches, for example. So what else can we do in this interface tab? Well, you can also set your repair priority, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can say how often the ships should go back to base and repair. You can even say never repair. Stay out there. Your mission is too critical for you to stop doing it. And if you wanted your fleets to stay out there indefinitely and only break off smaller groups to go and repair as they take damage, this here is an option, automatic split off. This will send your ships back to base to repair as they take damage. So after a battle, if two or three of your destroyers are damaged, they will go back to base and repair and the balance of your fleet will stay out on its mission. This is very valuable 
if your base is directly adjacent to the single sea zone, say, that you're patrolling. So our fleet here is based in Alexandria. That's right here. So that means that if any of the ships here take damage, they can have a very short travel time back here, splitting off from the main fleet, and then as soon as they're repaired, they come back and rejoin the main fleet automatically. If instead uh, you were patrolling the Eastern Mediterranean, but your base was an Italian base, like way up here in Venice, then you would not want that necessarily checked because that means that you would have to travel a long distance and maybe there's naval bombers from the enemy between you and the base and then the damaged ships are very small in number and damaged already, so that's not so great. You can also tell your ships, go repair right now, and as a group, they will go and repair. Control click will cancel their mission so they stay in base after they finish repairing. Now, what else can you do to manage your fleets? There's another couple of buttons on here. Engagement rule, fire at will. This can be very valuable uh, if you want to avoid getting uh, getting your units in combat while you're moving through an area. So you can turn this on temporarily, move your units uh, essentially from one area to another area. Uh, so if you had, for example, some German U-boats and you put them on a hold order and you had them moving through this area, then you would be able to use this to, example, hide from the British as you went through the English Channel instead of engaging them. You don't want to engage them. Uh, so, But normally you keep it on fire at will. You can create a new fleet here with all destroyers, all cruisers, uh, and bam, we've got a new fleet. And let's jump back to that fleet there. Hey, look, we made a new fleet. All of, all of our ships are separated. But what if we don't want a new fleet? What if we want to group them all together? Well, you've got a button right up here. G or click this button to group them back together as a big fleet. That's how you'll group any of your fleets together. If we take these subs here and we bring them back together, then they could now select both of them and group them together. If we wanted, we could again split off just the submarines and make them their own group. But remember that you can only put a new commander on them when they're in port. And commanders can be very valuable, so definitely remember to do that. Uh, the last important things that we can talk about here is if you want to select all fleets, you'll notice I can try to box select all these fleets, but it selects my divisions instead. Hold control. Now if you drag, you're only selecting the fleets. And we can, for example, have all these fleets meet here, and now... I could group them all up with G, and now I have one big fleet. You can use S to split this fleet roughly in half, as best as possible. So now, uh, we have two battleships here, two battleships here. Two heavy cruisers, two heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, four light cruisers, etc., etc. And anytime you have an odd number, it'll just wind up with 9 versus 8, or 1 versus 0 in the case of the carrier in this example. Alright, the last piece we're going to talk about is the home base. The home base is only important for where that ship gets supply. So we've got a little fleet up here, and if we see this is the home base in Lothian, this is this state right here, and we hover over the port, and we can see that the capacity of this port is 13 of 50. The bigger ships take up more capacity. So if we send this fleet out to sea, uh, this capacity will drop to zero because the fleet is no longer staged inside the port. That capacity is only valuable for when you're repairing a fleet. Because if we look at the supply map mode, and we hover over this state we can see that there's still 1.64 naval supply being used in this particular area. Now, this fleet is currently based in Lothian. If we instead base it down here in London, uh, by holding control and clicking on the London Naval Base, now it says Greater London Area up here. Now, if we go back to the supply map mode, you can see there is no more naval supply being pulled here. So where you base a ship only matters with respect to supply. If you were to be, for example, in North Africa where some bad supply situations are happening, you have a lot of land units there, uh, that would be a problem. But the range of a ship is not determined by where you base it. For example, this ship is based in Alexandria. But we can still have it, there's no red anywhere in the Atlantic over here. We can still send it anywhere in the Atlantic. You see, we can give uh, orders and it's drawing lines indicating that it's headed there. However, you can see that in the Pacific, we're getting a problem. We can't go there because that's out of the maximum range of a friendly naval base. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we're in naval, uh, naval map mode like we normally are when you press F2, you can see every blue naval 
base means it's a friendly naval base. That includes the French naval bases, that includes Hong Kong over here, it doesn't include any of these question marks. Except these ones here, these ones are friendly because I believe they are controlled by, yes, that's actually controlled by the British. So as a result, if we go back and select our navy there, what was that, our, uh, our float, our home float? This one right here. Uh, we can select that one and you can see that while they can base here, they can't go too much further from it. There's no bases nearby. Oh, Canada gives us some bases to get areas over here, but they can't go to this zone here. That is because the destroyer has a minimum range or maximum range of 1,500 kilometers. Whereas if we grab, for example, the submarine fleet here, even submarine ones have a maximum range of 5,000 kilometers. They can go anywhere on the planet because we have bases everywhere. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. A tiny piece of Siberian coastline is not available to our subs, but in general, the sun never sets on the British Empire. So, the base doesn't matter for where you go, it only matters from where you draw supply. However, the base is where your ship will go to repair. So if you want to just have all your ships supplied by your capital, uh, for example, in this case, the UK, uh, well, that would be great. You could put them all on all the ports in the England area here. But any time that your ships did battle in the Pacific and went back to repair, they'd take the long trip all the way over here. So you want your base close to where you're going to operate the Navy so that they can repair easily, but you don't want to overload the supply in those areas. For example, this base here, only 15 total supply. You don't want to put giant fleet stationed out of here. Uh, or maybe the Hong Kong one actually has quite a lot of supply right here because it has a very large naval base, so it is able to import a lot of supply. So that is it for this episode talking about the naval interface. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I will try to answer them. Uh, we will go into more detail on what the different types of ships do and how you should build your fleets on a future episode. Same thing with types of divisions and types of battalions and what you should put in your divisions and what all the statistics mean. Those ones are coming up soon, so go ahead and subscribe to this channel or just to the Hints, Tips, and Tricks playlist if that's all you're interested in, and you will see them in the near future. Thanks, guys. I am Bridger, signing off.